Good afternoon. You're watching The Plot right here on Ausbiz. Thanks very much for joining us this afternoon. Now, 2023 was a challenging year for Australian REITs last year. However, there seems to be a gleam of hope in the horizon with interest rates potentially stabilizing or coming down. Well, real asset management uh, remains optimistic about the future of healthcare and essential retail real estate. Matthew Stratton from Ram REIT joins us now. Matthew, thanks very much for joining us. Look, what has uh, 2024 been like given the kind of year that you had last year? Yeah, as, as you say, it, it has been challenging. Uh, I think we, we're working through yeah, uh, elements of, of disbelief, I think, and really where interest rates did go and how uh, inflation has really permeated through the economy. Um, we are seeing, I, I think you're suggesting, like, like we're feeling, we're starting to see those green shoots of optimism that the interest rate cycle has run its course. Uh, I, I do sense, like, uh, like the uh, Reserve Bank, that Inflation also has run its course, so there, there are still some signals that need, that need to be ruled out. But we are feeling uh, in our outlook uh, in, in both our healthcare and essential services, retail sides of the business, we're feeling quite optimistic. Yeah, so we're looking specifically at the RAM Essential Services property fund that you have, and I understand that the underlying asset there, it's based on non-discretionary retail and healthcare assets. I, is it you know purely because these are they have defensive um, aspects to them and why the optimism what's the trend like i think operationally yes the exposure we have to both healthcare industries and essential services retail which are supermarket based schemes schemes that are based in our local communities that uh, typically house services and, and, and retail offerings that are a part of a daily and weekly visitation those particular sectors have been quite resilient from an operational perspective. We've had quite strong leasing results over the last two years, a very strong leasing pension with good leasing spreads on new deals and renewals. That's at an operational level. At a, at a capital markets level, and I noticed you just showed the chart there, there which, which does show that the, uh, you know, our industry, our business alongside a lot of other REITs, have withstood quite a deal of pressure as interest rates rose so rapidly. And what that has done is put, put the spotlight on the real estate sector and, um, and investors are trying to really gauge an appropriate pricing point for uh, the stabilisation of cap rates. What, what does that mean? That means more volatility and that means a little bit of nervous, not nervousness exactly where cap rates and valuations are going to land. So when you do see signals like what we have uh, before Christmas uh, with interest rates stabilising and further uh, with the announcement by the RBA yesterday, you're, you're going to see that nervousness start to subside and confidence re-emerge that a lot of groups like RAM are going to be able to demonstrate that their underlying valuations are indeed in accordance with market expectations. They can transact, they can prove those valuations are appropriate and you will see ideally, uh, an emergence of optimism, which will in turn lead to some fairly, uh, fairly confident buying and tension back in the share price. And that's something we're hoping will emerge uh, in, in, in a relatively short order. Yeah, um, I want to get deeper into the conversation on valuations. But first of all, I was looking at your website. So this is up to date, 32 properties, the current portfolio valuation at 744.9 million, occupancy at 98%. Uh, so that are the, those are the numbers that we're seeing now. But as I said, I wanted to talk more about valuation. Before we do that, there's you know other fundies who've been looking at uh, your fund. And this is what David Lane from Ordinate had to say back in November 2023. Let's take a listen. Uh, they're very good managers. It has an exposure to both medical and also essential services. So effectively, your chemists and your um, your uh, grocery stores. So your day-to-day -day needs, um, it's a fairly defensive sort of exposure. They're trading at about a 32% discount to NTA. Um, and based on the fact that they're trading at such a, a discount to to NTA and that they've got a, an eight and a half percent distribution yield. We're forecasting a, a total return of about 22 percent over the next 12 months. So we've got a buy recommendation on them with a target price of 75 cents. 
So just to update, so that was last year. The Orbinet now has a buy on rep at 74 cents. Still, it was you know a positive evaluation of uh, this uh, fund. So what do you, from a valuation point of view, first of all, reaction to David Lane's statement, but also from a timeline of, in 2024, where, when do you think you'll see that valuation kind of normalize? Yeah, uh, and that's and it's a great, great piece of commentary from the audits, uh, from the audits team. Yeah, that's um, yeah, it's, it accords quite, um, quite consistently with the way we feel. Um, I, I look, I think that the from the, at the highest level, uh, the market has been had had an element of nervousness on exactly where pricing may land, and we've all experienced a movement outward in cap rates. Um, you know, the office sector, the retail sector, uh, healthcare, and the essential services retail has not been immune to that, but I, I will call out that it has had uh, you know, a relatively safe level of movement. There is very much a high level of demand for purchases looking to acquire assets that fall within our category. We disposed of three assets last year that were at or above book valuation. We've proved that our underlying valuations are sound. Our underlying valuation for the portfolio has moved out, uh, again, in line with the market, in line with market expectations. So I see where we are right now. Yeah, is um, there has been quite a distinct um, penalisation, really, for, according to where the market's nervous has been about real estate valuations generally. So when when that confidence gently reemerges that interest rates have peaked and that we are reaching uh, reaching gently into a, a normalisation of the cycle, uh, where we anticipate demand back into our particular portfolio to reemerge. Uh, and, and David's right, it's, a, it's an 8.5% uh, current expectation of yield for the stock. Uh, at, an, at a projected NTA of, of mid-70s, that would make a whole lot more sense from our perspective. But it is uh, a lot is going to depend on us getting, getting to work and delivering upon our promises which we do quarter by quarter. Yeah, and in terms of that confidence, uh, that your appetite for acquisition, uh, as, you, as you were saying earlier, is that mainly rooted in the fact that you're seeing the interest rate environment calm down or there are there also demographic and demand from a demand and supply point of view there are considerations there that you really think will be driving the property market in that sector yeah it's a great question there's a couple of reasons for that we we saw signals emerge in December that really gave us a, a higher level of confidence to pursue a, a range of divestments and a divestment program that's probably more substantive than our investors might have expected. We've walked them through that this quarter in our reasons for doing that or reasons for pushing into that program. We intend to recycle some of the assets uh, around the edges uh, of some of the assets that have run uh, that have run or seen through, we've seen through the investment case for those assets and we are seeing relative value elsewhere. Um, there are assets that we are looking to acquire or have been circling on as potential acquisitions for the portfolio that will introduce relative value compared to those assets we're divesting, uh, and all the while aiming to increase the sustainability of the income of the portfolio by trying to acquire assets that do introduce a longer whale uh, and a stronger tenant covenant. We're also, we will also take the opportunity to be quite dynamic in managing our leverage down towards the lower 30% range uh, as part of that divestment program as well, which investors are, have been quite vocal in this. All right. Thank you very much, Matthew Stratton. They're really interesting uh, take on with how the winds are probably going to be changing for REITs this year. Matthew Stratton from Ram REIT. Thanks. Thank you.